9 millimeter versus 38 special plus p and snub nose revolvers what i have today is our federal hydroshock ammunition our 9 millimeter is a 124 grain hydroshock and our 38 special plus p is a 129 grain hydroshock and before anybody comments here and i had this happen to me like hundreds of times throughout the years people think that there's a variant of an ammo like a 9 millimeter and a 9 millimeter plus p and a 38 special and a 38 special plus p and i'm picking the 38 special plus p and picking the standard pressure 9 millimeter to make the 38 special look like it's doing a great job and the 9 millimeter doing terrible i never do that the reason why that often happens is because like in this situation there is no 9 millimeter plus p hydroshock now there is a standard pressure 38 special hydroshock but it is within the low recoil line of their ammunition, not in their standard hydroshock version. So the only thing I could test the nine millimeter hydroshock in currently is the 124 or the 147 grain standard pressure or the 38 plus P 129 grain, which is very similar to the 124 grain or the standard pressure 110 grain low recoil variant, which really wouldn't be very comparable. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So we're gonna test our nine millimeter versus our 38 special plus P hydroshocks and our two inch Taurus snub nose revolvers, the two inch barrel Taurus 905 for our nine millimeter and the two inch barrel uh, Taurus 605 for our 38 special. We'll see how these things do. So we're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic test. I'm gonna go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential of those cartridges are. You know, with no denim in the way to clog a hollow point or anything like that. We'll see how they do. And then after that, I'm gonna do more of our real world simulation. We have four layers of denim on this first three inch piece that represents our pectoral muscle after three inches of clear ballistics. We're going to have a quarter inch medium density fiberboard to represent hitting ribs or sternum. That'll be more of our real world simulation. And then I am going to shoot at the steel target to see what kind of practical accuracy, follow up shots, recoil, and all that I can get on the steel. So let's get started with this test. All right, our 38 Special Plus P is rated at 950 feet per second through a four inch barrel. And our nine millimeter is rated at 1120 feet per second through a four inch barrel. So let's see what we get here with our 38 special through a two inch barrel, see how close we get to 950 feet per second. 886, 880, 862, 858. I'll read, for some reason that uh, those are shooting to the, the left for me. It's not typical for this revolver, the 38 special plus P for me. Our nine millimeter rated at 1120 feet per second. I am gonna check for a bullet pull on these. So I have marked it around the, the case mouth and around the, the bottom of that bullet there to see if we get any bullet pull here. And I don't think we will because these are sealed. Uh, these are sealed around the bullet and around the primer. I had somebody recently tell me that they're only sealed around the primer because you can only see the blue seal around the primer, but they are sealed around the uh, bullet as well. I've taken apart a lot of law enforcement grade ammunition and I use an impact bullet puller to do that just to kind of weigh the powder, see what, what's in them, you know, just to satisfy my curiosity and whatnot. If you take like a target round of, of ammunition of nine millimeter and you put it in an impact bullet puller, you get hit it like maybe two times and that bullet will come out. Stuff like this I put in, it takes anywhere between 60 and 100 hits with that impact bullet hammer against cement pull that bullet out and when it comes out you'll see a bunch of goo and stuff that's you know powders kind of sticking to it's that uh, sealant to seal out water but it also acts as like a gummy glue to keep that bullet in place so we're gonna check anyways though so right at 11 20 through a four inch barrel Let's see what we get through our snub nose here Nine eighty six. 1,000 feet per second uh, for some reason, you know, it was a little bit dark out here today. That's partly why I'm having some chronograph error reads. Um, first shot was kind of high. When it's darker like it is now, you have to get a little bit closer to the sensors, which I did. And yeah, I don't see any bullet creep whatsoever. So that's definitely sealed in there really good. Let me try to get one more read here. No read, so. I don't want to hear a whole bunch of like, why aren't you doing this and that with your chronograph? It's because it's a little bit darker. I didn't expect it to be so dark today. On the very sunny days, we have no error reads, but I'll take those two because they were very consistent to each other. So we get a pretty, you know, average number going on pretty easily because they were consistent. So let's hit our ballistics jaw block, 
see how these two compare. All right, the plain clear ballistics are our best potential. You know, no denim in the way to clog a hollow point, no rib simulation to slow down that penetration. Let's see what we get here, best potential, 38 special. All right, let's hit it with our nine millimeter. Go take a look. All right, big difference there going on, especially with our penetration. Um, I do see a little bit of a difference in our expansion. Now, with our 38 Special, there is some expansion, but it looks like there's some tumbling going on. Um, you know, there's enough damage in this first three inches to indicate potentially our 38 Special was expanding on the bottom here. And also with our 9mm on top, it does look like they were both expanding a little bit. But it looks like what happened is our 38 Special kind of lost a little bit of momentum there. It looks like it probably tumbled because the bullet is facing backwards. Not bad overall, but we only got a penetration of about 12 and 3 quarters inches of penetration, which is not bad. It's not necessarily a fail, uh, but there's not really a whole lot of expansion for that penetration. With our 9 millimeter, we're at about 19 inches, and we have more of a controlled expansion. Not really big pedals, but, you know, a controlled expansion. It didn't over-penetrate too much, really, and that's pretty typical for our old-school hollow point designs, so... Let's put on our denim, put on our MDF, see how they compare more of our real-world simulation. All right, four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter-inch MDF, more of our real-world simulation, 38 special. Let's see what we got. All right. Let's hit that with our 9 millimeter now. We'll take a look. All right, so very interesting. Now, what I can say here is they both remain consistent, which is a good thing. There's not a whole lot of difference in our our penetration and, and all of that. So what we got going on here is, honestly, it looks like they're both tumbling a little bit after going through that denim in the first three inches. Oblong keyholes going on there, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And I can definitely say it did happen with the 38 because it is backwards. We got an okay amount of damage with our 38 Special, but we only penetrated to about, uh, just about 12 and a half inches of penetration. Um, you would say that's kind of low, but it did go through MDF. So if that MDF were not there, that rib simulation, just the fact that that was clogged with denim, like it clearly is, it'd probably penetrate more to up here. Uh, but not too bad overall. It, it's very subpar because we're not getting expansion, but it's not a complete failure overall because we're keeping that energy right in that range where we want to. We're not over penetrating, we're not under penetrating. Now with our nine millimeter, a lot more damage and we do have, again, some controlled expansion. Just a tad more penetration, about 19 and a half inches. So considering this is clear ballistics and bullets will go uh, a couple inches further in clear ballistics than organic gel. And in an organic gel, um, you're supposed to get between you know 12 inches and 18 inches. You know, that could say that our 38 under penetrated a tad, but our 9mm penetrated perfectly. So, if we're looking at this as which is the better cartridge here for terminal ballistics, our 9mm did better. I don't believe either of these expanded to 1.5 times expansion, but our 9mm had more expansion and it did penetrate to more ideal depths. So, our 9mm did quite a bit better here. So, Let's pull these out, take a close-up look at them, then I'm going to shoot my steel, see what kind of practical shootability I can get with these. All right, so here's a close-up look at these. Here's our 9mm through our plain gel. You know, we had some good controlled expansion. Not fantastic, but we had some good expansion going on there. Enough that it didn't over-penetrate. Our 38 Special through the plain gel, we had half those pedals expand out. The other half didn't do anything at all. This would probably do pretty well through a 4-inch barrel, but, you know, through... This two inch barrel didn't do particularly well. Now going through our medium density fiberboard, here's our nine millimeter here. 
and it did pretty much the same thing but we got a little bit more damage to that bullet and the size looks to me like a little bit less and you know you clog that with denim a little bit you know you get a little bit of that going on now with the 38 special through the mdf yeah we pretty much got the same thing but just a little bit less just like the nine millimeter we got kind of the same thing but a little bit less so looking at this 38 special it didn't perform particularly well but it performed better than some of these you know older school rounds where we did get some expansion going on and we you know we penetrated enough so it's not an absolutely terrible round but in today's world you can pick something a lot better than this and the same can be said for this nine millimeter here uh, not particularly good if you went with something like an hst and a plus p in the snub i, I believe i've tested that uh did really well but this stuff is just kind of subpar so you know the hydroshock isn't great but it's not the worst you know it's kind of like our first generation of you know better designed ammunition you know right after the 1986 fbi shootout thing and the companies were trying to you know make better ammo that's where you started getting stuff like the hydroshock and you started seeing stuff like um you know a lot of plus p plus rounds and there's a few other newer designs that came out or came out around then and this is really one of our first gen um designs that were better than you know just basic jack of the hollow points so not great but okay so that's a close-up look at those all right so i want to see how we do from 12 yards or our practical accuracy here but i also want to kind of see how reloading does between a speed loader and a moon clip for me so i'm gonna have empty guns i'm gonna mock running out of ammo with the shot pull this out mock you know popping out rounds and then taking a reload and seeing how it reloads for me with our speed loader there and doing kind of the same thing here with our nine millimeter using a moon clip and i'm gonna to have to keep in mind that you know different technique for this because we want to just let it fall in and not shove it in and i think i could do that but without having much problem so i want to see the difference between the two of these so I'm going to start from the holster, pull it up, mock a shot, and then do a reload. I'll keep my reloads right where I can access them easily, so this is an even, fair test. So, 38 Special. All right, those shoot pretty good for me. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. With our 9mm, this might be a little bit difficult to do. So I'm so not used to the moon clips, but I'm going to put, keep the moon clip right where I can get to it very easily. Right here on the edge of my pocket here. Try to do the same thing. Alright, so I would say just a, a hair faster with our moon clip, but it is awkward for me. So I'm not used to it. So let me back up. I'll shoot the steel from a little more distance. See how they continue to shoot for me. All right, 40 yards from the target. I just want to see how these things shoot for me. So nine millimeter. Let's see what I can do with this. All right. No moon clip on those three, but I'm gonna reload with the moon clip. I can do. All right, I went a little bit too fast there. I pulled some of those shots. That was definitely just me because those first three shots I was firing slower and I hit. So I would say from a snub nose revolver, this Hydra shot shoots really good. A lot of nine millimeter rounds don't, but this shoots really good. So 38 special. See how I can do it with this. All right, so just like up close, they are all hitting really far to the left for me. Once in a while, I'll get an ammo that does that. Just randomly does that. So I'm gonna have to aim to the right. I'm gonna aim just on the edge of the target to the right, maybe off the target just a little bit too. So, kind of hard to see where to hold with those. So, overall, though, 
both of these had about the same felt recoil, which is interesting. You know, our, our nine millimeter ha definitely had more power by probably a good 100 foot pounds energy or not quite that, probably 50 or so, 50 foot pounds energy more. But, you know, the recoil is pretty much exactly the same. And the reason for that is, you know, I've done a lot of reloading and I've looked at a lot of reloading data and, and ammo companies don't necessarily do this, but some of them actually do. If you take a, a charge for a nine millimeter and you to overlap that same powder and that same charge to a 38 special, it puts it over the limit of 38 special and makes it a 38 special plus P. So oftentimes the exact same powder, the exact same charges of those powders, nine millimeter plus P and 38 specials using the same charge, exactly the same. So even though the nine millimeter has more pressure, it doesn't necessarily make the thing recoil more. It might make the, the recoil a little bit sharper, but it does not actually have more pounds in your hand, foot pounds, energy of recoil in your hand. So very similar between the two of these shooting these. So looking at this though, it just for me, what I'm seeing here is that 38 special is definitely lacking. Um, I've seen a lot of good 38 special loads, don't get me wrong, ones that do a lot better than a lot of nine millimeter loads. But generally they do that because they use a bullet that will expand a little bit easier, kind of like they put maybe a thinner jacket around it or they have a better design. So they'll expand really big as with a nine millimeter, if you reduce its velocity in a, like a snub nose or a subcompact pistol, whatever particular bullet design won't perform well at all because you know it's designed to work at you know normal nine millimeter velocities but between the two of these here you know the nine the 38 special is definitely lacking it's not designed particularly well because we're not getting expansion our nine millimeter well that's not you know designed particularly well it's got enough velocity just that little bit more energy and velocity that it is expanding a little bit and working so between the two of these here i would take the nine millimeter uh, but both did relatively good for what they are. No extreme over penetration, anything like that. No extreme under penetration. Both did pretty well, but our nine millimeter just did just a little bit better. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.